what you've seen is what's been happening with Virgil, the same sort of kind of thing, right? They've kind of picked on somebody who maybe isn't the most culturally, I would say culturally, isn't the most politically aware, who isn't the most, who doesn't try to cater to what the general populace is kind of thinking, which has probably led to his success, right? The, the, the fact that he bucks trends and tries to go his own way, the fact that he tries to see the good in people instead of seeing the wrong in people, the fact that he's a, generally a bit of an optimist and tries to, you know, um, uh, relay that message to his adoring fans. I think that it, it, it's no coincidence that he's been picked out as a guy to kind of go after. And they were quite clever in what they picked him out of because, you know, for more the things you would have thought he would have picked out of here. Okay, so um, Jesus Christ, this is incredible. So here we go, right? So there's a few articles here that I want to talk about um, that kind of speak about it. So number one, Hypebeast article that kind of gives a bit of an, a background on what the whole entire problem is and what people are complaining about. Again, for me, it's really, really ridiculous and I don't really, I think of all the things to kind of pillar Virgil for, it's weird because he probably got more, he probably got less stick when he did the Ralph Lauren thing, right? Which I think in general is something that hasn't, he hasn't necessarily really recovered from. I think part of the reason why a lot of the Hypebeast comments, people hate him. I think for the most part because they're trolls, but I think for the most of the reason why is because he came into the game with those Ralph Lauren uh, 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 flannels, right? That he was selling for five hundred dollars. I essentially picked up for thirty dollars and tried to, you know, um, kind of um, say it was an art project, whatever it may be. I think that kind of, you know, you only get a, a chance to make a first impression once. I think that kind of fucked him over for the most part. But I think he got more stick for this ridiculous thing than he did for the Ralph Lauren flannels, which really, or the Ralph Lauren rugby shirts, which really shows you how ridiculous some people are. And if you're wondering, oh, what exactly are they complaining about? What what what, what did Virgil do this time? Um, is it association with Dinner and Connor? Is it the fact that he's associated with Aisa Bari, who did they both did maybe some questionable things? No, it's none of that. It's to do with his lack of diversity, supposedly, in his workforce at Off White. Um, Virgil did made the mistake of posting um, their off season Christmas party on Instagram, which I saw briefly on his Instagram stories, thought nothing of it. And then suddenly over 24 hours, uh, people started getting hysterical and saying that he only employs white people. Like, oh my God. Like, really? Like, for real? This is the guy that you want to go after. Okay, cool. So, um, let's read the entire article. Uh, let's see here. Oh my God, they're going off on him. So, the entire article is on Hypebeast, right? Update. Virgil Abloh responds to criticism regarding off-white's lack of diversity. Update. We've recently reached out to Virgil and the designer's rep has provided the following quote. My design team is diverse as the world is big. The video shown was an off-white dinner at the headquarters in the city of Milan, Italy. This party was to celebrate the hard work of the local Italian team. I remember, I think he put something along the lines of um, a Christmas party in quotation marks. Um, I'm sure if you guys have worked for, you know, startups or smaller brands, things are going so quickly, you know, especially if your brand is kind of on the ascendancy and, you know, you're getting more popular and more orders are coming in or, you know, just got more work on. Sometimes seasonal activities that you usually do, maybe company retreats, maybe holidays, maybe um, seasonal holidays don't necessarily get done on time. They're meant to get done because so, so many things are happening at once. So in an effort to kind of, you know, um, respect people's um, desire to have those occasions or those events because you know, some employees love them because it's a good way to bond, great way to let your hair down, drink on a company dime, on a company card, you know, just get fucked up. It's a good opportunity to eat some good food. Some companies like to have those things off season. Like I remember a company I worked for had their Christmas party in January, right? Some people like to have theirs in March just because it's so busy and you don't have the time to do it on Christmas because sometimes people go away and they go to different places to go visit family all over the world. The one time you get everyone in, in the office, might be a time when you know not very not the conventional time so he decides to have a christmas party in march or april whatever it might be for his uh, team to celebrate you know their achievements because again in the next couple of months they're all going to be fucking busy it's going to be hectic in the office again they're going to be running around for fashion week so it's a great way to kind of make them say thank you to everybody and again if you know anything about Off-White and Virgil Abloh, the, the, the actual company is rep by or manufactured or, product, or produced by the New Guards Group, a company based in Milan. For the most part, I'd imagine Milan isn't the most culturally diverse city in the world anyway. Uh, most of the people that work in New Guards Group probably come from ex- other fashion houses uh, in and around Milan or around Paris. So, they, you know, people are already working in the industry. Um, for the most part, the industry isn't as culturally diverse as it needs to be, which is why we have a Virgil, which is why his, him being appointed to Louis Vuitton was such a big thing because the hope was him being appointed would be, then usher in loads of different talent. He'll be able to highlight different people. Look what he's done with the Es Bravado kid, the kid that does all the um, diamantes on, on the jeans and shit and edits them and does little kind of edits or whatever it may be and makes his own jackets. He's kind of put put him up into the front and have him do some of the jeans that he does at Off-White. So again, the hope was 
with Virgil kind of at the helm at Louis Vuitton, with Virgil um, kind of running his own fashion brand in Off-White, the hope was he'd maybe change the cultural conversation, right? Because essentially his uh, fashion show would be a lot more culturally diverse than maybe a Dolce Gabbana show, right? It would be a lot more white. It would be a less whitewashed than those shows. Not, that's not a, a diss to those guys because that's that's the world that they live in. But the world that he lives in, he, sh- he should be able to kind of uh, bring it to the forefront, have it on a runway. And for the most part, you see it, right? With the casting, uh, with the people that are on the runways, with the photographers he uses, with the models he uses, with the show models, the fit models, it's all very much under the guise of like, let me um, change the conversation. So he's trying his best in within to work within the system. But again, people are not happy. So it says additionally, an off-white rep says, when questioned about diversity, Virgil takes pride, pride in being African-American. The fact that he has to explain this is fucking nuts. He does, his design team is, is diverse and his practice has been built on making the art and design industry as inclusive community. Fair designers like Samuel Ross, Heron Preston, Nova Vegas, seen by Tremaine and, and A-Side, um, uh, Everard Best, photographer, Fabian Montague, amongst many others have been given a platform via Off-White. That's true. You only have to look at his list of collaborators. If anything, he's done very well to kind of separate Off-White and Louis Vuitton. He's been very experimental. He's been very collaborative on the people he uses on Off-White and maybe a little bit more fashion-y with a capital F with Louis Vuitton. He still kind of does some really cool, interesting projects with like the uh, music activations that he done, right? Um, I forgot what they call. We did it with Benji B, kind of Benji B as a musical director for Louis Vuitton. But with the Off-White thing, you can't deny the stuff he's done with Nogue Vegas Ian, working with Heron Preston. Well, he basically um, gave Heron Preston his opportunity to um, have New Guards Group back in and produce his stuff. Like, it, there's nothing that you can really you can't label lack of diversity or not being inclusive with Virgil Abloh he's probably the worst person to kind of pin that kind of accusation at, in my opinion um, he wishes to use this moment of being questioned to be a moment of reflection within the industry to showcase the talents behind their designs and entities and to push the design community forward Virgil also responded diversity as fashionista notes Virgil Abloh is once again in hot water after defending after defending his Michael Jackson design Louis Vuitton which again I thought at the time was a maybe a little bit insensitive but what I thought at the time was that not everyone was aware that this documentary was coming out. I think people have to be a little bit more sympathetic that not everybody is, is as, um, I don't know, ent- I don't know, culturally, not even culturally aware, is aware these shows are in production. I knew it because I fucking subscribed to the television subreddit. So I heard it spoken about on podcasts I listen to. But I don't know how many podcasts or cultural podcasts um, outside of maybe music stuff or maybe fashion and design stuff that Virgil listens to. And why should he be paying attention to all these other things when he's got so many things to do anyway? So I was aware of it. So I knew, you know, if I was maybe on his team, I would have said, hey, maybe you might want to um, put down the hole because this documentary is coming out and it might, you know, completely destroy um, Michael Jackson. Because he had two things, outcomes could have happened. Number one, the documentary could have come out and everyone could have been like, you know what, fuck that. That documentary ain't real. Like, we don't believe those guys. Or number two, the documentary could come out and they could com- completely paint Michael Jackson into being a monster, which it actually did. Now we're kind of seeing it kind of being questioned a lot more. But the initial reaction was that Michael Jackson was a pedophile. So I was a bit, I was obviously aware that even though the show was great, there was a lot of emotion behind it. I thought Blood Orange's performance was fucking incredible. I thought the set design was really good. He got Futura involved. He had that kid doing front flips, Kid Cuddy, Octavian, like loads of amazing casting. I thought it was really well done. Maybe it's not as good as the first collection, but I thought it was a great show. I was under the impression that it wouldn't hit the shelves. I, I wouldn't. I was pretty sure it wouldn't be sold, right? And you know, as 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 time progressed, he kind of got forced into cancelling it, right? He tried to defend it, tried to say he was only focusing on his artistry, but over time, um, you know, the um the, the social justice warriors out there, uh, in an effort to kind of cancel Michael Jackson, also cancel his collection. Fair, okay, chalk that up to an, an L. You wasn't aware of it. Let's carry on. But this diversity stuff is fucking bizarre. Abloh's Instagram post showed various members of the off-white Italian design team. Abloh was celebrating the talent of his t- staff, describing the art directors as crazy talented crew of kids. Social media users were quick to point out the lack of employee diversity at off-white. Cool. You wanna you want it's weird how you view things, right? When I saw what he was posting, I thought that was quite admirable that he was using his platform to highlight everybody that was at that show. And I'm pretty sure he tagged quite a lot of people that, that he was taking pictures of in the Instagram stories. Or he reposted some of the stuff that they were tagging him in. 
So he purposed, he always uses his platform, maybe apart from when he was working with us at Mastered, to kind of retweet, reshare people that he kind of feels like should be getting some light too. He's always doing that, always, right? So I thought it was quite admirable that he would do that, right? He wasn't just posting pictures of what he'd done and how he designed the fucking interior and the chairs that he did. He was actually posting the people behind Off-White and like, hey, give these guys some love too. And if you know anything about the fashion industry, you know it's very small. You know, for the most part, everyone's worked everywhere, Right. And people can need to kind of rely on that kind of, hey, give me a recognition. So someone can kind of maybe pass you around to another team. You kind of get a move somewhere, get another look in. And those things matter. It doesn't it doesn't seem like it does, but it don't matter because, you know, the people who hire individuals who headhunt are watching these Instagram stories. So it's very good to do, especially if you have an Instagram profile and you upload your portfolio on there. It's great that he's doing it. But again, some people see that as like, I don't know what him highlighting the fact that he's only white people today. It's like, and what, and even if it is only white people working for him, what are you meant to do now? Not hire white people. Like what ridiculous again. So how far does the conversation go? If he hires only white women of a certain age to work in his company, then what? He has to hire more dudes and get rid of the women. And let's say it's fashion industry, right? Let's say the fashion industry, for the most part, representation-wise, um, you know, female models get paid, you know, way more than male models do. There's no, there's no protest about that, representation-wise. Should he get in all dudes? And then if someone argues against it, you say, well, there's too many women represented in the, in the fashion industry. I want to give guys a little bit of a shine. How would that go down? It's like you can't win with these people, man. You can't win. Like, what do they want? Do they want you just to, like, they want, they want... What they basically want is they want to run they want to run your company for you and which is what annoys me the most because I think if you have such a problem with the way Virgil runs his company or the way some people are um, representing fashion, lack of diversity, the one thing you can do, you can't do that maybe with Twitter or Instagram or YouTube because they've got a bit of a monolith. Sometimes you know, some people would argue that, oh, the people that argue for free speech on YouTube or for Twitter should just make their own platform. You can't. It's too late now, right? The amount of... Um, the amount of due diligence terms and conditions um you know lawyer fees you'd have to do to start up something like a twitter nowadays was crazy right i think youtubers only just started making money so it's hard to kind of go out and kind of make your own platform right you kind of have to play within the rules but i think with fashion i think with design for the most part with products and commodities you can essentially save up some money and just do it the way you want to do it you could just start your own company and make it a rule that you just only hire black people only hire people from a certain area people from a certain age, people from only a certain socioeconomic background. You could do that if you want to and see how far you're going to get, right? There's like, um, didn't the, the a, a, a feminist group in the US do a certain thing, a similar thing with a coffee shop? It went out of business, um, unfortunately, but they tried to start a coffee shop where they were charging men 18% more because it reflected the 80% differences in wage, whatever it may be, right? Wage differences, the wage gap, right? It obviously didn't go well and it kind of went out of business, but they tried to do something. That's cool, right? Try and do something. Don't go and pick it outside Starbucks and implore them to uh, charge women less. Start your own coffee shop. That's what you should do. So instead of pointing fingers at Virgil, even if he is doing things wrong, which I don't think he is, make your own brand. That's what you should be doing instead of complaining. But again, I think it's probably easy to complain. Um, Despite a bevy of shots showing a room packed full of people, critics immediately singled out lack of black staff members. Widespread denunciation is rather uncommon for off-white CEO. As Virgil's Abbott's work at CEO has revealed accolades of its inclusive influences, progressive campaign imagery is again exactly that campaign imagery with the with the with the black kid, a little baby with the over, with the kind of jumper, oversized. Like that's fucking beautiful. Like what the fuck? Honestly, people are weird. The disparagement has ever, has ever of the disparagement has even spread to off white Instagram with users commenting on unrelated posts calling out the racially homogenous staff. Um, a rep of Off-White's PR declined to officially the comment asserting that off Virgil's Off-White story showed a mere fraction of the 156 design team. Check out the images below. It's like, come on, man. Virgil's Instagram story last night showing the team of people that work behind the team. We notice anything in particular? what that is a milan based um, it's a milan based fashion production company um that's made up of loads of people who have worked in the fashion industry for years and they all happen to be a certain color and creed there's nothing to real say here this is non-news the fashion industry is i don't know is maybe culturally behind the time it's not as woke as it needs to be cool but these guys are trying to do it they're trying to force their way in right the time when virgil and Kanye and those guys were standing outside Fashion Week wearing their um, those kind of ridiculous outfits with the briefcases and stuff. They were pillared all over the internet. People were taking a piss out of them, right? They, were, they weren't getting invited to shows. They were essentially gate crashing shows and trying to sneak in and trying to get into the industry and no one was giving them a shot. That was essentially what we were all trying to do as as a culture, right? Even I, from the, you know, 
from where I am, way, 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 way out of the fucking inner circle. I was a big fashion fan. I was just, you know, obsessed with fashion, reading magazines, being on forums like Fashion Spot and all these malarkeys, uh, obsessive over fashion, but knowing that I couldn't really get in there. I wasn't included. I didn't feel like I was represented. And all of a sudden, these guys come around, right? Even though Kanye's first collections weren't that great, it was still great that he fucking smashed the door down because I knew um, the consequences or the people coming after him as he smashed that door down would be the ones kind of changing it. And look what's happened, right? He smashed the door down. Then comes a Virgil. Then comes a Samuel Ross. Then comes a Heron Preston. And all these other designers are kind of filtering through. Soon, you know, the new designers, the ages between 16 and 21 nowadays, kind of um, honing their crafts, making t-shirts. Guess what? Well, I wonder what level they'll be at in the future. Like, it's it's going to take time for things to change. But this is the way the industry is at the moment, right? But he's trying to change things. And again, like what, even if it is all white people, like I don't understand what this is. What do we want? We want to cancel everyone in fashion. That's white. Like it's bizarre, bizarre, bizarre to say the least. Again, people tweeting, not going to lie. I thought Virgil would have not, would have some black people working for him, but I'm not surprised. Why are you not surprised? You would have thought, so you would have gave him the, the benefit of the doubt, but you're not surprised. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, fuck in hell. And again, how white is everybody in that table? Are they all from Italy? Are they? Are they? Are some of them from Bulgaria? Are some of them Romanian? Are some of them Asian? But they look white. Like how white? Like what is the different? What is it? This? What is the? What are you trying to like? Again, what's the point of this? Like honestly, I don't understand this. It's really, really bizarre. But I think it comes from most of the people that are essentially trying to cancel people. I think for the most part, people don't like Virgil. I think that's very evident. I think that like the fact that people are so quick to try to cancel him is evident that of the lack of love he has from in, in terms of you know the general population when I kind of cancel him they don't really like him as a person I think mostly it comes from that rugby flannel thing might come from the early kind of interviews when he first started he came in, he didn't come across he came because dis disingenuous I think he's gotten a little bit less disingenuous as time has progressed again just with experience it's all, all well and good that might be it and also I just think it's the current state of affairs right instead of trying to educate somebody which is again I think it requires an, a massive amount of hubris a massive amount of arrogance to think that you can tell somebody how to do things but let's say it for once let's kind of you know agree to disagree instead of trying to educate somebody instead of trying to enlighten them instead of trying to bring them to your side or get them to agree with you by educating them on why it's important to maybe be a bit more culturally diverse and purposely hire people from different backgrounds maybe have a quota instead of trying to make them understand that side which is fucking ridiculous in the most part you're trying to shame them into shame them into uh, obedience or extinction that's what you're trying to do either they agree with you and fall in line or they don't agree with you. And again, me as a creative, why am I going to fucking curd or crumble or surrender to this mob mentality when I've done nothing wrong, right? You're taking one, it's like um, they're purposely focusing in on the party and ignoring all the collaborations he's done, ignoring the people that he uses for his imagery or on these, um, you know, resort shots. Like, did he just do a Louis Vuitton resort collection that I've previewed recently? Like, I don't know, featuring that guy that hanged around with Skepta and shit. Like, the f like what do you want like what do you want like again it's not about quotes it's not about whatever but what do you want you're focusing on the one thing only it's like come on man if you did a collection inspired by poland right and it happened to be all white people would they just focus on that and ignore everything else he did previously it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous and it's not the same thing as a better month thing because the better month thing when they did they had the kind of backlash for the representation the thing that annoyed me about that was that it was pretty evident in the first stages you know maybe the first couple of seasons of better month kind of being popular within uh, the current culture within the you know the fashion streetwear scene it was very evident who was wearing it any any metropolis city you went out to it was asians and black people that were wearing better month that was it no one else was wearing better month i didn't see any white kids wearing it i only saw black people and asian people and even till this day, you, that's still people see you wear that same thing, right? That kind of massive biker jacket with all the patches all over it. I've seen people from Flatbush Zombies wear it. I saw Tiger wearing it. I saw maybe Chris Brown wear it. Like, I, that's the only people I see wearing that kind of stuff, right? So when they when they started doing their runway shows and it always was the same kind of person, right? Fairly white, Eastern European or Central European person. That got annoying because you're not reflecting the people that are wearing your brand. They obviously made amends. They started to include a bit more of a culturally diverse cast. And now essentially they're using an Instagram profile as a page, to, as an opportunity to kind of, you know, uh, showcase people around the world who are wearing their items. Awesome. You know, that was well done. But the virtual thing is so strange. Again, more tweets here. Me watching everyone come to the realization that Virgil is indeed not bringing diversity into the spaces he occupies luxury landscape because I warned y'all about this over a year ago. What are you talking about? Into the spaces, like... 
again, I think if you have a problem with the way that he's operating in the space, why don't you try to get into space and do it your way? I remember there being a really good panel discussion that Virgil was on. I think it might have been during the Selfridges thing. I think it was Sam Russell. Some, 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 except some panel discussion. He was sitting down and some girl came up on to ask a question. It might have been, you know, um, a bit of a backhanded question where you're trying to set somebody up, trying to get them, kind of get them in a gotcha moment, asking about female representation in streetwear. And he said something along the lines of that. Yeah, there's loads of brands out there, female-led streetwear. Yeah, I mean, maybe it isn't the customer base for it at the moment, but there's loads of women out there making streetwear clothes. And then, anyway, if you want inclusion, just come up onto the stage. You kind of invite her just to kind of sit on a panel. There you go. There's inclusion. I've sorted it. That's the streetwear way to do things, right? You just sort things out. It's not, again, it's not something that you're doing consciously, not trying to um, limit the female voices out there. But, you know, when I, and that was a while ago. That might have been five, six years ago, that panel discussion, right? And streetwear has progressed, you know, it's become super popular in between that time, right? There's far more people involved in it nowadays, which is why you see kids as young as 15, 13 with their own cut and sew brands, right? It's gone fucking crazy. So imagine if a kid got up there and said, oh, there's no kids under 18 who are representing streetwear. Okay, cool. You start it. You make a t-shirt. You make a brand. You start a skate team. Straight away, uh, deck out your friends with, with, with the clothes that you make. Start building something that way. And, and straight away, you've, you've kind of changed the conversation. You can start those things now. We don't, we don't really, we're not, uh, we're not, um, there's no monolith happening here. There is no patriarchy in the thing that we do right now, right? It's all thing, it's very democratic. If you're the best person at the job, you get the job. Um, and luckily, luckily in this kind of, you know, work era that we live in, luckily Virgil's friends have come out to his defense. Cause that's the thing that I've kind of been a bit annoyed about with when it came to Aaron Bondroff. Again, there might be details of the Aaron Bondroff story that I'm not aware of, but for the most part, Aaron Bondroff was the darling of streetwear and, and culture and art. And all of a sudden he got accused of a couple of things and he got completely excommunicated. No, no, not one person, maybe apart from Lucian Smith has kind of come out to his defense. Um, maybe that was because he was the first kind of victim of the Me Too era, right? He was kind of the first kind of streetwear victim that kind of got the backlash of it. And he kind of, I don't know what's happened to him so far. Um, they took his name off the Moran Bondroff Gallery. It's called Moran and Moran now. Like, he's going to completely excommunicate from everything. And he's not involved in No Wave. He's baby. Like, it's been completely ridiculous. But luckily for Virgil, his friends have kind of come out of, out of the woodwork and started backing him, which is great to see. I think there's an article here that sort of shows it from High Snobiety. Uh, let's get it up on here again it's a really ridiculous point of view even to be talking about this but let's see here so Virgil's friends and fans come to Virgil Abloh's defense over the off-white apparent lack of diversity again bullshit um, topic in general but let's see what they're talking about here um, commentators are quick to point it out again we see it so what are they saying here this person, Shelby Ivy Christel, is saying, Virgil is on IG showing images of all black creatives and talents he's worked with as counter to the criticism he's received for not having people of colour on the off-white design team. This feels like, but I have black friends. No, it doesn't. It's not the same. It's not at all like that. If you're saying he doesn't have diversity, but he's showing you tons of people he's collaborated with, with off-white, that is diversity. If, I, if, if they're not on my team, like, what do you want? Like, it's ridiculous. So if you had two people there that are black, They'll say it's not enough, right? It needs five. How many? How many is enough? Should it be half? Should it be ninety percent, eighty percent? Like, it's absolutely an insane argument. Um, however, his friends came out. Uh, here, here we go. Um, one friend, Samuel Ross of um, a Cold War, uh, says the following: Remember the time before the idea of black designs and Afrofuturism entered pop culture and was deemed uh, to be viable career route before the concept was presented to you. This time was approximately five to seven years ago. Don't cave in on the pillar of our culture for likes and for uh, pessimism. Are you saying Virgil is responsible for that? Talking from experience, pre-post concept of black designers, designers, cross-field, being seen viable dialogue to having commercial space have to operate in daily. If you've worked in the field prior to 2012, you'll understand uh, the value in pop culture shifting since then. Of course, because I know what I, I I know what happened when when fucking Oswald Boateng was around, right? I know the things I heard. I saw the writings, the reviews, the coded languages that were used about Oswald Boateng back in the day. Um, and Oswald Boateng wasn't even doing... Um, wasn't even trying to what would you say he wasn't playing into the hip-hop current culture the kind of you know the things that people don't like about but he wasn't even playing into that he was just providing his take on Savile Row tailoring right um, he had African influence in there for some for, for some in some hints of African influence in there in terms of the color palettes in terms of the cuts the patterns used like amazing amazing suits but for the most part he was playing he was playing by their rules 
and he still got pillared by the industry, still got absolutely flamed. And he was a, he was a fucking, you know, he was a talented, talented, he still is a talented tailor, right? Could make a suit with his eyes closed. Like, could cut a jacket, like, you know what I mean? With his highest tie behind his back, like, amazing designer. And look how much stick he got. Uh, again, you think Virgil is solely responsible for that? It's talking. It's taken and will take hundreds of thousands of years for individuals to continue to shift this perspective and space. It's nowhere near achieved. This whole facet of design is in incubation. And Samuel Ross is another one that, that, that gets unnecessary stick. The kind of stick Samuel Ross gets on uh, what they call show studio panels, why is it? Is it because he's black? Is it because the things that he does people think are simple? Is it because they think the clothes are not well made? Well, the proof is in the pudding, right? He has probably one of the best I think, in general, uh, takes on streetwear that exists on a runway. He's got investment coming out of his ears. He sells in, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of stores. He stuff sells out all the time. He has a real connection to kids. He comes from a very intellectual, diverse background. His father was an artist. Like, there's loads of things in his in his favor that would get him a little bit more good grace with the fashion press or the fashion media or fashion students. But they completely hate him. And where does that come from? Uh, holding company, uh, satellite offices, senior design team versus general employee, parent company, local employment agencies, all relative, unconsidered with Virgil's conversation. To break it down to the outside, his core, core team individuals is four to five PSCs. No need to drop names. Exactly. Just because you're... So again, what do they want? If you, if you get investment from a company to keep your brand going, right? Again, these same black people that are pillaring him for what he's doing aren't buying what he's making, right? They're not fans of his brand. No problem. So they're not, they're not providing anything to the bottom dollar. They're not allowing him to continue uh, making his brand and hopefully furthering the conversation. So if he gets investment to try and hire more black faces from a, a predominantly white company, does he get cancelled too? Or is he allowed to take money from the white man? Or, 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 or can he not? Like, what's the rules here? That's, it just goes, it's just ridiculous how far they're going with this nonsense. Um, here's another screenshot. I think, uh, who posted this? I think, uh, Denim Tears posted this. A screenshot maybe from Samuel Ross from Virgil back in 2013, reaching out to Sam saying, hello, Sam, recently came across your work and thought it was great. Do you have a portfolio at the moment? Showcase the full extent of your work. Talk to him, Virgil, Donda. Um, this is Denim Ross's, Denim Tears' post saying, you know why Samuel Ross, who worked for Ye, who worked for V, who worked for A-Side and I, wasn't at Off-White Christmas Party? Same reason I wasn't. He was too busy walking through the fashion creative world to world door that Kanye and Virgil drop kicked on the hinges um, in the name of the black poor genius that has existed since tribal times Africa till now in the Western white male patriarchy dominated world. What y'all want Virgil to do? Trying to snap all the white people out of fashion industry? So I say exactly. Or do you want him to operate with humanity and hire, create the best people from all cultures and communities to push the creative world forward? So before pointing a finger and thinking about who you have done, what, what you have done to for empowerment or any minority community that is lacking protection for your life, Ever. Anyone can preach from the vapid ivory tower that is internet, but it takes a real one to hit the streets, help others without broadcasting it for validation. Y'all should try. It. And again, that's the hardest part. That's the thing that people miss. Why don't you go out there and do it yourself? You Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, it's probably hard to go out there and create your own version of it. Oh, there's too many white faces on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. Probably it would take a, a big effort, a huge undertaking, a huge financial um, sacrifice for you to go out there and make your own version of those things. But you can start your own publishing company. You can start your own product placement company. You can start your own marketing agency, your own um, consultancy, your own DJ representative agency, your own brand partnership, your own radio station, whatever it may be. You can start these things right now and further your own message going forward, but they don't want to do that. They want to cancel one voice, and what? Who are you going to replace them with? Who are you going to replace them with? This dead guy here, right? You're going to replace him with this fucking dullad. This guy that's got a shirt called Off Black. Like, you're going to, is that you're going to replace Virgil with? This guy. Cardi B, I'm out. He launches a brand calling out Virgil's silence on diversity. Off Black, is that what you're doing, right? Off Black t-shirt. Fuck off. Flipping hell, these guys are numpties, man. Numpties. The ones that they want to pick on to fucking further their message is so absurd. Anyway, continue on here. Another picture. Meanwhile, in a sneaker year, as worn by my friend Frank Ocean, he's dropped this year, was designed by an Asian woman. My friend, uh, Cactus, um, this woman from Cactus Plant Flight Flea Market. To my limited knowledge, her and Yoon Ambush are some of the first non-athlete Asian women, can't forget Carmen Sakai, to ever have a sneaker deal. I could be wrong. My point is, do you care? 
where is the article on this or the outcry celebration on this and ah there is none why because it's not the trendy topic of the week so if you want to diversify something start by celebrating female achievement females of any color women is it women have it the hardest in the, every field from the creative to the corporate boardroom from the first world to the third world more of the story support everyone not just what is on trend and call out or, or call, to call out or celebrate uh balance out cover over nepotism in any direction but what do i know and no one does it no one's really doing it and there we go diversity is right there look at that entire front row look at the people cheering in the background is that bafik i don't know who that is but look at that look how amped everyone else is there look at this so what do you want what do you want what do you want again it's it's good to see all these friends coming out and supporting him because I think we don't get much of that nowadays in the social media work era. Everyone's a bit shy and doesn't want to um, step out there and talk about how their friends come, you know, help them out and stuff and back up their friends when they're getting pillared or being mobbed. Um, again, this will pass. Another email here from Leighton talking about his reverse out to work on the off white on the sorry on the users campaign. Uh, this person says, I know there's hate for Virgil for what's perceived of him not supporting black kids or empowering them off white, but just know he pushed a country kid from South Carolina indirectly to be a better designer and gave him visibility and hope with one email. Um, and yeah, loads of people just out there reaching out and talking about how much he's helped them. The symbolism alone for a guy like him to be doing what he's doing should be enough just to celebrate. That's what I said. Even if he doesn't hire him, just him doing it is enough to be like, oh yeah, I can do that too. Um, I say this without any bias, just with information. I've worked with him, met him two to three times briefly, and he has done enough for our, all us black people in the creative space already, indirectly. Loads of people coming out and supporting him, which is good to see. Anyone who thinks Virgil and his enterprise lacks diversity needs a needs dictionary in Braille. Again, just great stuff to see overall. Happy to see everyone kind of, you know, you know, bucking the trend and not kind of caving into mob mentality and saying, you know, this, enough is enough with this mob mentality shit, man. Target the actual people that actually need to get targeted, not people that are actually doing God's work out here, man, and trying to further the conversation. It's just fucking ridiculous. And again, if you don't think he's um, doing enough for black society or black entrepreneurs or black creatives, go out there and start your own thing. Don't point fingers, and you know from your fucking as as uh, denim tears says from your um internet ivory tower and try and get people to do things the way you want them to be done do it yourself but what do i know what do 